Hello guys, Shadow Sabbath here, and today I'm doing another episode of my reviews of Amphibia, guys. Today I'll be reviewing The Core and the King and The Root of All Evil, or The Root of Evil. I don't remember which one it was. Either way, guys, those are two very good episodes. One is very lore-heavy, one is just pretty nice to watch. Either way, this is one of my favorite episodes, so excited to review. Let's begin. We start off learning what the planters and Anne are doing by going around and asking different groups to join them to fight King Andreas. While everyone tries to convince, Hot Pop tries to convince them by telling them the different benefits of having plants there, but no one really cares till they show them other stuff. Because this, Hot Pop feels a bit left out of gathering new people. And guys, as they're leaving this first town after convincing people, this bug, this Andreas' robot, latches on and starts to track them. They get knocked out after crashing and wake up into this weird town wearing these weird clothes. They see all these people and they find out they're farmers growing giant crops and Hot Pop immediately feels at home. He admires all the plants and stuff and doesn't even wonder how or why they're there. But then guys, weird stuff start happening. When Loggle accidentally steps on a flower, everyone there starts crying uncontrollably and overreacting over a simple flower. Hop Up though knocks it off as Anne and the others not understanding how much plants mean to them. Then, guys, we get one of the biggest comebacks since Barry the Berry guy a few episodes ago. The bug, that was his friend Jeremy, is back in the episode. No, guys, I'm joking. The spore mushroom from the episode, uh, season one, episode 19, all the way back there, is back. After the cliffhanger of Jeremy accidentally consuming him and being a taken over by the spores he's now back controlling jeremy turns out he gave spores to this whole farm town and they're all connected which is why they're so good at farming but so interested in crying over the flowers jeremy basically sends them to attack uh, all of the villagers attacking the planters but then after he almost traps the planters and explains his motives and everything that happens the tracker ends up letting all the robots know where the planters and Anne are. They come and destroy the whole town and village that these people were, including Jeremy and um, the Spore. And they leave out Season 2 style. Hop Up, though, feels bad and decides to come back and help the Spore and the different villagers. After some awesome action destroying a few robots, then the Jeremy slash Spore decides that even though they were just saved, he's going to double cross and defeat them. So Hot Bop decides they can be friends, explains everything. Jeremy decides to join the resistance, especially after Hot Bop compliments his excellent farming skills. But guys, as much as I did like that episode, nothing really compares to my excitement of seeing the episode The Core and the King, one of my favorite episodes of Amphibia as a whole. We get a lot more lines from Darcy this episode, who explicitly tells Andrews, that it wants to be called Darcy, the whole core entity. And Andreas, after a funny joke from wondering what to call it, Marcy, the core, Marcor, says on Darcy, and brings it this container of food. Not only does Darcy reveal that it's keeping Marcy trapped inside a compartment of itself, it also reveals it wants to try red velvet cupcakes with ubi frosting because that's apparently Marcy's favorite. Gotta try that one day. Andrew seems to feel a bit bad that Marcy's gone, and Darcy, realizing it has some of the traits of Marcy and quirks and flaws, wants to delete all memories that Marcy has. In doing so, Andrew decides, and Andreas reminisces of his past, and we get to finally learn what happened a thousand or so years ago. We got off with our first confirmation, guys. The barrel! This is barrel! The one with the Warhammer confirmed that's the Toast Friend. So many theories about this, guys. And we see this spring ancestor, guys, guaranteed. And why do I say guaranteed, guys? Because in this episode, she does the planter family dance. If you remember all the way back from Ann Hunter, Spring said that he had a dance that was in his family for generations. And of course, Amphibia can't just let drops of lore like that go without any payoff. So we find out this frog actually made up the dance, meaning nearly guaranteed a planter ancestor. Afterwards, Andrew shows them the portrait that we saw torn up earlier on in the episodes of all three of them together, and they're all so happy. 
We meet King Andres' father, who, oh my gosh, guys, he not only does a great job with the voice acting, does a great job being menacing, but he gives so many, so many payoffs in this episode, guys. Not only speaking the line where he said, don't you think it's time to say goodbye to those childhood friends of yours? That is a line where people weren't sure if it was from the court of Marcy or if it was actually meeting Andres' father to himself. We now have confirmation. He also shows Andrews the first look at the core and says during the episode he's going to be joining the core, which is also interesting. So we now understand. We don't know how exactly how he joined the core, but we know that his father is in there. Andrews' father warns him that now that he's about to become king, his friends may try and take over. Maybe it's time to get rid of them. Andrews decides he trusts them. His father gives him the assignment to go destroy all of Earth and get the minerals from it. He's given a key to go check out the room with the music box, guys. This is where bad things start to happen. After this pink frog, I forgot her name, and I don't feel like remembering it right now, and barrels start playing around, basically playing keep away from Andrews, and Andrews gets super worried. This frog, she touches it, and she gets a bunch of glimpses into the future. Some of them we've seen of Andrews mining the place, but one of the weirdest ones, guys, there's actually... One where um, a bunch of asteroids are coming to Amphibia, which should be near the end of the show, guys. It's probably giving us a hint of what's coming. And that part alone shows us that stuff are coming, guys, and not good stuff. She, of course, tries to tell Andrews and his father. He, quote-unquote, believes she's lying. I feel like he does know what actually would happen. Believes she's lying and tells her, basically, to leave and explains to Andrews. It's not a coincidence that the second you got... The music box and all that power. Your friends are trying to dictate what you're trying to do. Basically, turn him against his friends. And then, guys, this is where we see where Andrews turned how he is, which makes me feel a bit bad. And this furthers my idea that Andrews, in the end of the show, will sacrifice himself or in the end help Anne and the planters because this scene alone, guys, the pink frog takes the key when Andrews isn't looking. And Andrews only notices it when his father tells him to take the key out and he doesn't have it. She starts leaving with the music box, claiming they should not have it, and decides to go to the Ohms, where we also got that hint that there hasn't been one in a long time, to find out what to do. Angie is sporting his lightning sword, or light sword he used on Marcy. Beryl also almost captures the pink frog, but she talks to him a bit and convinces him not to take the music box from her, and stuns him for a second, allowing her to escape him. King Andreas' father is obviously very upset, and Reed tells him that in a few hundred years, the music box is destined to show up again. And this is going to be the time where Andrews has a chance. Stores Arnor, but they have no idea will it, where it will be. Andrews, feeling betrayed, burns the picture, cuts it up. And the worst thing, guys, he sends Beryl out of his sight and says to go guard neighboring villages. Which is why that's what Beryl became. And that's where his Warhammer is found. Just so sad, because Andrews will never know how his friend died. And the last thing that he would ever say to him is, get out of my sight. Beryl almost crying, but leaving, since he is now the king. Come back to the present with Darcy here, losing all of her memories and Andrews feeling a bit bad. We end on the ominous note of Darcy wondering if he needs to get rid of his memories too, and if he's feeling about it, and if he's ready to invade Earth. And Andrews replying, he's been ready to invade Earth for the past thousand years. And you can even hear his father there, as his father then tells him, I'm proud of you. And that's the end, guys. I'm so excited to see where this goes in the future. Very sad to see this; these three break up. And also, this also makes me believe that the Pink Frog Spirit's ancestor is not strength. And the colors, while representing the music box, aren't the exact one they are. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I loved these two episodes. Go check it out, guys. Have a nice day.